Hey ladies, I'm your host Rebecca and my goal is to lead women towards faith and confidence through the bumpy roads of life. Welcome to the She Bold Podcast. Hey ladies and welcome back to the She Bold Podcast. Today is episode number nine, The Power of Prayer. And I want to start with this verse, which is Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Prayer. Prayer is something so powerful, yet so neglected. I know that as Christians, we know we are required to always pray every single day. But reality is, prayer life doesn't seem as important as it should sometimes. Whenever we go through something, either it's negative or positive, our first reflex is not always to go to God and ask him why and how to heal us or thanking him if it's a blessing um, for his blessings. We instead, we instead find ourselves going straight to friends, family, social media, all of those things, and then to God. But if we could just understand the true power and authority behind prayer, the game would totally change. Listen, ladies, God is looking to have a consistent relationship with you. And a strong relationship requires a lot of communication. It shouldn't feel normal to go through a whole day without taking a real moment with God. And when I say real moment is put your phone down, get in a quiet setting and seek him without distraction. God wants to hear from you, even if he already knows what you're going through or what you're going to say that doesn't give any less values to your words. He knows that there's days you're tired. He knows that there's days where your fire is not is not as high, but he still wants to. It, he still wants you to come to him, open up to him, and talk to him. And don't think that prayers always have to be with the same energy. Yes, intense walking prayer with declaration, rebuking, and all of that stuff are important. But calm and honest, normal conversation with God also are important. And do not, I repeat, do not neglect praying for others and that brings me to one of my favorite shows at the moment uh it's called chosen you guys you need to look it up okay that show is so powerful you have to watch it it's not your regular jesus story um the way they brought it it's it's a deeper level it just blows my mind every single episode and I can't explain it enough. You really have to watch it. So anyways, um, so in that episode, it was that time where Jesus healed Shula from her blindness after her friend Barnabas requested. And why did her friend re- requested it and not her? Well, it's because she didn't think her situation was important enough because she's been in it for so long that she learned to be comfortable in it. And she learned to still serve God through it so she didn't even want to ask God for deliverance because she was okay with her situation but the love and faith her friend had opened like the love how can I say that the love and the faith that her friend had in Jesus opened the healing door for her life he himself needed healing and when I say he I'm talking about her friend he needed healing but he requested Jesus to heal her instead and said that he's he- that his healing can wait. And of course, what did Jesus do? Not only did he heal Shula, but he then proceeded to heal Barnabas because of his faith, his love, and his selflessness. And you know, when I saw that part, it got me so emotional because, let's be honest, we never know the true situation, the true pain that someone else is going through. Some have dealt with sa- the same battle, for so long that it became their normal life. Pray for your friends, pray for your family, pray for your coworkers. It doesn't matter if they don't see you doing it. God sees you. And if they don't have the motivation to pray or simply don't want to pray about it, 
God can steal freedom by your prayer. We all know someone whose life doesn't represent the glory of God, but yet their lives are so protected somehow. And behind them, you find praying parents who never stop praying for their children or for their protection and their deliverance. And I need to say this because I've been there before. Living in constant depression is not normal. Being constantly anxious is not normal. Listen, there's so many things that we make normal just because everyone around us seems to experience it or seems to post quotes about it on social media. But don't ever, ever allow your situation to take priority over God's power. I repeat this. Don't ever allow your situations to take priority over God's power. Did God call you to have a constant spirit of depression over your life? Did he call you to live anxious every single day of your life? No, he did not. But Rebecca, that's just the type of person I am. No, that is not who you are. Stop saying these things all over yourself. Remember, the tongue has a lot of power. That is not the identity that Christ gave you. So if I go on Ephesians 2 verse 10, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us in you in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Another one, 1 John 4, 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. You are created to be like him, not like the world. Stop trying to fit in when, where you're not called to fit in. And by that, I mean, yes, you are physically in the world, but your image, your soul, all of that should fit in Christ's image. And uh, oh, especially this one, okay? John 14, 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. And I add to that, stop seeking for peace and worldly things. God said he gives you that peace, not crystals not or yoga or whatever spiritual or new age things that there is out there. Because we all know these days, it's just anyways, <laughs> you know what I mean? But God only God only can give you that. And he also said in Proverbs 12, 25, anxiety weighs down the, the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. And 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. God literally gave us the, the gift of peace of mind and heart. It is literally written. Fear, anxiety, all of these things, depression, are not from him. So why do we give them so much power over us? Let's stop making this a normal identity thing and let's start praying about it and asking God to remove the worldly identity from us so that our true identity is in him can shine. Don't be scared of asking. Don't think you're bothering him or wasting time praying about it. Every single prayer is heard and remembered by God. And that brings me to something I've heard some time ago. Sometimes in church or wherever, we are asked to pray for a certain subject, for example, healing, right? And it will happen in that moment that you don't require any type of physical or mental healing. But maybe a day will come that you will be in a situation that requires healing and you won't have that motivation or energy to pray about it in that moment but God will remember that seed you planted a few years back when you were declaring health and restoration over your life every single prayer declaration you see over your life are seeds some grow and flourish very quickly and some only come to affect years from now but it is still meaningful and important for you to plant them with prayer, you can get answers, you can get healing, you can get freedom, you can get so many things, but just willingly spending time and conversation with God. 
Don't let your daily things step over your relationship with God. Every relationship requires time, focus, communication, and so much more. So work on that first relationship you have, which is between you and God, and treat him like he should. As your father, as your best friend, and don't ever get tired of seeking your deliverance. Some things might happen right away, like I said, but other things might take months, sometimes years. But never stop praying and rebuking whatever you're battling with. And I feel like I gotta say this. If what you're battling with is a person, remember, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6.12 says that that person that is hurting you, don't fight them. Fight the evil spirit that is using them to get to you. That's your real enemy, okay? Don't ever forget that. So ladies, I hope that today's episode opened your eyes and gave you a different perspective or prayer. I know that some of you already have a prayer life, but maybe you should get it to another level, get deeper into it and be more consistent into it. You will not lose any of your time by doing that because everything that we do for God is never in vain, okay? Remember that. So you have a wonderful rest of the day and stay blessed. I will talk to you on the next episode.